Now that we have everything set up, let's actually start creating a basic API. In order to do that, it's very simple. All we need to do is design a public data model. And the API platform will use the public data model classes in order to expose and document a web API. So what does that mean in real life? Let's go and make a start on that now and you'll see, or you'll soon see exactly what I mean by that. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience, and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon, and welcome. Before we do that, we're just actually going to stop the local web server that we started, and we're going to actually serve it using the Symfony binary, because I found that when I was practicing with this project, uh, things worked better when I did it that way. So, stop the server, so I can do that with Control c and then you're going to need the Symfony binary for this. If you don't already have it installed, uh, you can get it from this address. It's a very simple download, and then you'll just have it installed. And so it's got instructions for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And if you want to know what it does, it says that the Symfony binary is an open source project, and it provides these things here. The best way to create new Symfony applications, a powerful local web server, a tool to check for security vulnerabilities, and seamless integration with platform.m. SH. So that's what we're going to be using. I've already got it installed and so now what I'm going to do is actually going to start a server again except I'm going to use this command here which is symphony serve hyphen D. I'll paste that in there, hit go and then this time it's going to serve it with HTTPS. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to a new uh, browser tab. I drop that in there again. I append on API Okay, and we're back to where we were. So what we need to do now is actually go and create public data models. Before we do that, let me just show you where we should create these. So if you go over to config, which should be your second folder down, and then packages, and you'll see a file called API platform.yaml, API underscore platform.yaml. So these are all your configuration files, and this is the one which is specific for the API platform. And if you look at this, you'll see a mapping here, and it says paths, project directory, source entity. So this is where we need to create our public data models. If you're familiar with the um, Symfony framework or, Sim or you've used Symfony before, then this is where you create entities which are your public data models. And so that's what we're going to do. So we need to go to source entity and in here we're just going to create an initial, just a PHP uh, class and we're going to call it manufacturer. So don't start getting ahead of ourselves and thinking in terms of entities We're not actually going to make this an entity yet. We're just going to uh, create a plain old PHP object Okay, let's take this one step at a time. So all of the steps will make sense So what I'm going to do is actually just going to add a comment here and say a manufacturer and then what we'll do is give this a ID which can be an integer or null and we'll initialize it as null and so if we go back over to the browser and refresh this we shouldn't see any changes so we still have the same thing however if we actually go and mark this as a resource which we can do like this we are marking it as an API resource If we go back to the browser and refresh now, and believe it or not, we now have a working API. If you look here, we have uh, typical API operations such as get, post, get for individual items such as individual manufacturers, put, delete, and patch. And if we scroll down here, you can see we have the schemas for our resources. So we have a manufacturer. At the moment, we just have one field on there, which is an ID, and it was actually set to private, so that won't show up. But let's go over and actually create some fields which will show up. So if we say public string name, I'm just going to set it to an empty string. And for each of the uh, fields, if we add comments, it will actually show up in our schema on the tool there. So uh, what we'll say here is the ID of the the ID of the manufacturer and here we'll just say the name of the manufacturer okay so let's go back to the browser and let's refresh this and so this time if we look at the schema 
we can see that we have a name which is visible to us and it says the name of the manufacturer. If I was to set that to private and we go back and refresh then it's no longer visible so it has to be uh, public or it needs to be publicly accessible. So how do we make a private property publicly accessible? Just think of it like programming in uh, PHP, object oriented PHP, all we'd need to do was actually just create a getter for the name and so the name can be accessed if we go back and refresh. Okay, so now you'll see that we have a name, but notice here it says read only is tr uh, read only equals truth. So that means that we'd only be able to read uh, the name of manufacturers when they come back from the database. We won't actually be able to set them. For example, if we wanted to create a new manufacturer at the moment, we won't actually be able to set the name. So how do we actually make it not read only? How do you make it so it's writable as well? Again, just think in terms of PHP, all we need to do is just create a setter for this. Let's go back to the browser, refresh. Okay, and now you notice that the read-only marker has gone. We can now read and write to the name field of a manufacturer. This is fairly basic at the moment, so behind the scenes what I'm going to do is just going to add three or four more fields, and it will give us a better example to work with. And so this is what I've come up with, nothing too extravagant. What I've added is a description, I've added a country code, both of those are going to be strings, and I've added a date time interface, which means it can be a date time or date time immutable, and that is just a listed date. And you'll notice that I've just put a uh, little comments here because that is what you see when you look at the schema here, for example, where we see the name of the manufacturer, uh, this little explanation there. That basically comes from these uh, comments which we put above the properties, so quite useful to you. Let's go ahead and add getters and setters for our new fields. So I'm just going to use PHP Storm, which will do some of this for me. And I'm just going to add them for description, country code, and listed date. Because ID is something which will be set uh, by the database, and it's not something that we're going to need. I'll go back over to the browser, and I'll give this a refresh. And so we should see the new fields in the schema. So if we have a look down here, and so the listed with the types, so string, uh, for the names and for the date, it says string and then date time, and it also tells you if things are nullable or not. So that's all pretty good. We now have a working API, however, there's something missing because we don't actually have any way, even though we have a database, there's no way of persisting this yet. So what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to look at our manufacturer uh, class here, and we're actually going to turn it into a doctrine entity using annotations, and then that way we'll be able to actually uh, add manufacturers to the database by using the post operation and we'll also be able to retrieve manufacturers as a collection and be able to retrieve individual manufacturers using their identifiers. So we'll do that next. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.